everybody. I'm Josh Wolf. Hello, I'm Jacob Wolf. And welcome to another ooh episode of Hey Man. Nice hey man. shirt, dude. Yeah. I don't even have one of those. I forgot I was wearing it until right now. That is super cool. <laughs> now, let me ask you real quick how you feel about this bucket hat. I like it. I think it's great that we're going back to the bucket hat theme. Or not theme, but the bucket hat also from last week. So, hold on. This is Terry Cloth. Look. I wish I was there to just hit you into that camera or hit that Hilarious. camera to your face. Um, and just so you know, if I'm a little tired, today is my first day off of coffee. Like for good? You stopping or is it like a For like a, a minute. Thing? I'm going to stop for a minute. I'm going to stop for a minute. You okay. know, and I'll, and I, I don't, I don't, I don't mind saying this out loud. I've had some issues with in the past with mold in my body. And um, I can generally keep it under bay. And for those of you who don't know, if you're like, what the fuck? It's right. a thing. It's a thing. It's a thing. It's and um, a thing. sometimes when I, I, I drink too much mo coffee, I can really feel myself feeding, feeding the mold. And right. there's sometimes I, I don't know, how, you know, I don't know how else to explain it to you, dude, but sometimes it feels like, right. Like, I've stopped coffee before because it feels like my body is on fire. Isn't the right word, but on fire oh, would be an unfortunate. Is that a strain? Is that a stain? Oh, I spilled, I spilled this. I was drinking this water and it came out too fast. I spilled it on myself. Got it. I was going to say, I was like, I've seen that from the beginning. I just assumed you knew it was there. And I just yeah. It. No, I didn't know. Yeah. Okay. But so time to stop the, a lot of inflammation happening in my body's right in my body right now. Dude, All right. I think I fucking, okay. Let me just also, I think I, I did the old maniest thing. I think I hurt my knee. Standing with your mom. Oh, I'm wearing a brace right now, dude. To find standing. Well, I was standing with your mom. We were walking Indiana, and I just honestly settled my feet. Bink, bink. And as soon as I put the left foot down, it was like a sharp, sharp pain on the side under my knee. Where, it was like a where, like, like ACL side, like behind the knee, like outside left side of the knee and that and that, that curls under on which knee left side left okay outside. so the outside there yeah. you go all right and so, so it was like okay. a sniper Gink! and i was like ah and i dropped to the ground and she was like you went to the floor yo dude it was like a it was like a so oh, no. I, I've seen non-contact injuries, but I was like, I really was just standing. I wasn't. Okay. Hold like on. A... If it makes you feel any better, there was a kid in high school who was in my grade. I won't say his name, but when he was, he was varsity since he was like uh, a freshman. Like when they called people up, like he was one of the guys they called up um, and he was super good receiver, but he ran, started to run track his sophomore year and just decided to jump in. And he's literally warming up, like he's doing what they call uh, like a skip. So it's like just like kind of yeah. jogging with your knee up. And as he put his right leg down, he tore his ACL. Oh, I think that might have happened to me. So if it makes you feel any better, it's happened to a kid who's way younger than you. It doesn't. It doesn't. Kind of means kind of means you're an athlete. Not really. You know what I'm saying? Make you feel better. Yo, but I would. Yo, if you went to the floor, I would definitely get that checked out. Well, you know, I Googled it. And so it's a little oh, sore. Google might tell you you're dead. No, I know. But what I mean <laughs> is I Googled it and it's a little sore, right? Right. But what I read about the ACL is for some people, it doesn't even hurt that much. Is it swollen? Um, not really. Not on the outside. Inside it is. It's hard for me to, you know, do full extension stuff. Okay. Well, I would ice it, Tylenol, elevate. And then check it in the morning. If it's super swollen in the morning, go to a doctor. Elevate as in get high? I mean, yeah, that'll probably help too. But like, you know, your your you know, leg above your heart or your injury above, you know, so your legs up while you're laying down. You know what I'm saying? Dude, so great to see you and Amon this weekend. 
it was so much fun. Madison, really, Wisconsin. Is that yeah. my new favorite city? I don't know, man. It, it's up there for me. Like that was a really, really fun little town. That, this, that, I mean, cl- that club was amazing. Staff was great. The crowds were awesome. Like, I don't know. Like it was, look, it was I'm going to say something. I'm going to say something. And I, there's something great about every, almost every club. Like I really enjoy most of the clubs and most of the club owners. Like, yeah. I know you hear nightmares. I think that must've been in the eighties or, I don't know. Right. I, most of the people I run into in this business are good people. Yeah. I mean, they're just doing their jobs and they're good people. And I don't know if they're yeah. good people, but they're doing their jobs and they're nice to each other and all that stuff, right? Yeah. This Madison, Wisconsin go, went so far up the green room. I would have stayed there. I didn't. Need I a would hotel. have slept there. I didn't need a hotel. I would no. have stayed there. Yeah. Dude, the lamb shake from the restaurant below the, the it it was it's like it's top three for me right now i okay so denver comedy works has always been great oh, and i will say the one thing denver downtown comedy works has is that they i mean denver has free weed right and True. i think i like t- I mean, it's hard to say we didn't do spend a lot of time in downtown Madison, but we didn't need to. Right. No. So I was totally okay with both locations. Now the Denver yeah. downtown, the Denver comedy works downtown um, condo is pretty dope. I would agree with that. I mean, you have your own room, like yep. there's a balcony. There's, yep. it's just a dope. It's decorated dope. The crowd is super nice. The club is awesome. The crowd um, is great. The crowds are made. Like, so those, I think, look, if I take nostalgia and hometown stuff, all right? Yeah. Because the store is the store. I'm not, I'm talking about Boston hometown. Oh, oh, oh. Boston's in my top three also. Well, if I, oof, this is tough. Those two are so uniquely amazing. You know what I mean? Right. You, you know, it doesn't take much. It doesn't, it doesn't take much for, mo- for a lot of us. It doesn't take much, but, but like, sometimes like, you know, going in what they think of you, it's like, it's sometimes it's really, you're like, Oh, yeah. is this what you think about me? Cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It's nice. Fantastic. It's nice. Yeah. But, 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 really- but dude, you crushed it on stage this weekend. I felt like I did. You absolutely crushed it. I felt like it went. I feel like every every weekend I get a little better. I can't wait for you all to see these clips. I can't me too. Wait. Yeah. There me were too. two really good ones. We're not going to talk about what they are, so it's, but I cannot wait for them. I people. can't wait for, uh, yeah, I can't wait for a specific one. Oh, and so guys, people have been for asking sure. a lot about the next dates that Jacob is on. Jacob will be in Nashville on father's day we're doing a special yep. father's day show we're doing a dot we're doing a dad joke competition it's gonna be a good time a dad okay. joke competition yeah it's gonna be a good time so come down come on out and also he's gonna be with me in san antonio the last week in june i think that's 24th 25th 26th i don't know um but something like that yeah but that's gonna be both of those weekends are gonna be i'm on fire Super i'm on fire right right super fun i'm pretty excited about it and so make sure you come out now tonight guys uh, our show tonight um tonight today uh, we're tonight. we're answering your emails oh, yeah. um and so i know last time i really tried to not say people's names hey am i always on this side of the screen aren't i on that side of the screen sometimes i don't know no, I, no, I, no, I'm always on this side. Are you always on this side? Yeah. Maybe. You know what's been happening a lot lately? I've been laughing and then hiccuping. I wonder what that means. No, no, no. All right. You ready for email number one? Yeah, let's do it. Here are the questions, everybody. Damn First it. name. <laughs> UK, if you have the hiccup for the rest of this, I'm going to laugh every time you hiccup because I know, you know how, how much, much I hate that. It's so 
so good how much he hates the hiccups. I, he hates the hiccups. Can I tell you honestly what I think every time that I get them? They're so pointless. They are pointless. Like it's one of those things the body does. I'm like, what the fuck? Here's what I <laughs> yeah, think. I don't fucking get it out. Here's what I think. Because the body doesn't have too many what the fuck things. But the hiccup right. is a what the fuck. I think it's a leftover. I think it's a leftover from a different version of us. Like evolution. You know what I mean? Oh, 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 got it. Yeah, it's yeah. something that we just didn't uh, a while ago, like of. maybe yeah. way a long, long time ago when we were eating bones and fur. Yeah, okay. I don't know if we ever did, but you know how, like, I don't how, think like, we ever um, did no, I don't know, but I don't know. Okay, let's let's just for a second pontificate on why millions of years ago the body would have needed to hiccup. Okay, ready? Okay, I must start. You can think of your answer, okay. Okay. All right. Here's my theory. The, and I am going to stick with that. You know, a long, 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 long time ago, you probably couldn't clean your meat or, you know, th there were still oh. bones in it. You, we were eating primitively outside around a fire, maybe okay. at some point in time eating raw. And I think, we had like, you know, like you never see a dog choke. Cats don't choke. They eat hair and they don't choke. They, they, they just had a real strong, you know, reflex. Yeah. And I think the hiccup was originally that for us. We needed, cause we were eating bone and, and, and out by the, in the, over the fire, raw hippopotamus, hippopotamus, probably not saber tooth tiger you know you're really stretching this just so you know hippopotamus and saber tooth tiger i don't think lived at the same time i don't know for sure though so by the way we so. for those for those of you who are wondering i wonder what josh knows and what he doesn't know we're deep into what i don't know so uh, yeah <laughs> a little a little too far i think but anyways so that's what i think i think we needed that to be able to really cough up things that we didn't need to eat Jacob, I want to go. I want to, uh, Jacob. Well, thanks, Josh. Um, <laughs> well, I think uh, I think it's kind of just like a like a leftover uh, buildup of gas in your body. So, like a burp is like how you can um, let out, you know, some gas that you have in your body or air, whatever you want to call it. But I think the hiccup is just uh, just some leftover of that, and the only way your body can get it out is some sort of well, it's when terrible. your diaphragm goes up and down. Right. right. So what I, you're I saying is old us, like e eons ago us, we had a lot of gas and the, and the diaphragm just needed to constantly pump it up. Yes. Yo, by the way, yours just as reasonable as mine. I think they're a little both less of a story. Now, when we post this, somebody's yeah. going to say, hey, you dumb fucks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's I'm okay with that. Yeah. I'm okay we with that. Totally fine because neither yeah. one of us are claiming to be doctors. Or uh, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, not even educated enough to barely know what a hiccup is. Well, um, I know what it, I think I know what it is. It's when your diaphragm goes gook, gook, I think. Right, but you said think because you don't know for sure. So we don't know exactly what it is. I do want to know why it happens. Okay. If I keep talking, I'm never gonna get to the mail. Hold on. <laughs> okay, I honestly I could just keep rambling and then we would never yeah. get to one email. Okay. It would be good. it would it, it would it would be an hour and a half in, and we would just be talking about something not even close to hiccups. Can I tell you something? It's one of my very favorite thing about our relationship is that there doesn't have to be a subject. Nope. <laughs> we had things we wanted to talk about, and now look where we are. Yeah, we're at emails. Okay. Yeah. All right, here we go. Just kind of how it goes sometimes. I know. This is your emails to us on the Hey Man, H E Y M A A N, no exclamation point, Hey Man Pod at gmail.com. Send them in. We will answer them. Here we go. Yes, we will. Let's do it. I will not do first and last name. Just first. Right. Lucas says, 
Hey guys, I started watching the pod since your latest appearance on the Dope as Usual podcast, and I love it. It's the funniest father-son content on YouTube. Thank you so much, Lucas. Thank you, boss. I just wanted to ask if you guys could share that one story everyone has of themselves getting uncomfortably high drunk. Keep up the content. You getting first. uncomfortably getting high uncomfortably high drunk. and drunk. Oh, high, high or drunk. drunk? Yeah. Um, I was 17. You'll remember this. You'll remember this because I uh I had a terrible excuse. Um, I was 17 and it was going into bless you. And it was going into my, you almost smacked your face on your mic. <laughs> Swinging back you so fast. Wish. Uh, you were so close. <laughs> I saw you even turn back and go. Ooh. I like thought you, it was like someone you. there. That's how quickly it came up. <laughs> oh, uh, I was going to my senior year of high school and I was over at my buddy's house, Jackson. And the next day we were supposed to leave for Joshua Tree. Um, and it was the trip you, me, mom, Evan, and Jack took. I remember um, that trip. Yep. It was an awesome trip. Great trip. And uh, I remember we, you know, weren't, we didn't have med cards at this time. And so we still had dealers. And so our dealer, we, you know, had bought a bunch of stuff and he bought a bunch of stuff over and we were packing up all the bags and, I was, you know, just chilling at his house and I was going to come back home later that night because you had, for some reason, told me I had to come, I had to come home and I couldn't stay at Jack's that night because I had to pack more things in the car. I don't know. I don't remember. It was some, I don't know. It was some weird reason that didn't make any sense, but it probably did. Um, I was just a 17 year old kid who wanted to get high with his friends. Yeah. Um, no. Hey, I'm, just, a 50, I'm a 52 year old man who wants to get high with his friends. So, yep. Um, and, uh, after he dropped off all these things, we decided that we were going to split an edible. And, um, one of them said a hundred milligrams on it. And I was like, all right, cool. 50 and 50. We should, we should be pretty high, not too crazy high, but we should have a good time. And then about 25, 30 minutes in, we get a call from, uh, our dealer. And he says, Hey, forgot to tell you something. And I was like, Oh, shit. That's never, <laughs> that's never good. You never like hearing that. And he was like, uh, one of those, uh, one of those edibles is misprinted and he worked at a dispensary. And so like everything he was getting was, was straight from the spot. And he was like, Oh, Hey, yeah, sorry. There was a misprint on some of the labels. Um, and I grabbed these before I grabbed one before we fixed the label. That brownie is not a hundred milligrams. It is a thousand. Oh no, that's a huge <laughs> difference. Massive difference. Are you kidding me? It's more, it's like the largest difference. That's a whole extra zero, bro. <laughs> Yo, that, that is that, one that is, extra zero and on the wrong that, side. Yeah, and yeah. a fucking comma now. Like that is that's a big jump. Yeah. Had you ever like, taken that much up until that point? No. I had never taken over 50. I had just taken my usual dose and multiplied it by 10. Um, let's just say I threw up everywhere. Did you? <laughs> oh, everywhere. For how long? Well, uh, honestly, it was, it was shockingly quick. Like, Are we in the same I, chair, by the way? Yes. The respawn? Hold on. Shout out respawn. One, two, um, three. One, two, three. You go that way. I'll go that way. One, two, three. Oh, it's the wrong way. Hold on. <laughs> you got to It's the opposite for me. I go with so you. So no, you're, no, go the way you went. I'll go the other way. All right. One, two, three. No, let's go the other way. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> what? One, two, three. That's what you yeah, want to do? Because when we cut that, it's going to look way smoother when we send it to respawn. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you add that part in there too. Yeah, that doesn't uh, do me any good right there. That's hilarious. Um, okay, so uh, how long were you we having? Well, do you remember the text I sent you that night? I hey, so. I got I got kind of sick. I told you I started throwing up, but I didn't tell you I was too hot. Yeah. I told you I had just started throwing up. And my you were you guys were like, well, we'll just come get you. And I was like, no, I'll just stay the night here and wake up and we'll go to Joshua Tree tomorrow. And and then I should have just let it be at that. But instead I tried to come up with something sly 
to uh, make it for a reason why I think I was throwing up. And I said it was because of the, the milk that was in the cereal that I ate. That was bad. 500 milligrams in, that's the best excuse I think you could probably come up with. Yeah, it makes total sense to me. After I had just thrown up a bunch also. Yeah, makes total sense. So uh, I was high probably the rest of the night. Yeah. Um, I, I, I would say I threw up, I, I couldn't get off the couch, but I was like, yo, somebody bring me a trash can, please. And it was probably a 25 or 30 minute ordeal. And then I was uh, just super high for the rest of the night. Yeah, that's the best part. Yeah. Yeah, you get if you ever get that high, like it always like it evens you out. Like you like after you're drunk and throw up, it's not the same. But okay, when, let me ask you a question. When yeah. I for me to answer this question, no, no, throwing up high is a relief. Throwing up drunk is the beginning of a long night. Yes, which yeah. is why another reason why weed is a thousand times better than you. No doubt. Let me ask you when it's I answer this close. question. Yep. And I know some people get distracted because of the ring light. Hold on. <laughs> it's pretty funny to me. That's my favorite right there. Not <laughs> one night I got high after and after a zoom, I was just, I did that in the ring light for about way too long. Let me ask you a question. When I answer this, what era of my life do you want this answer to come from? That's my first question. I want, I want all time. <sighs> or you can call it same same age as me. Like I chose high school, okay. but I'm also 25. So you can choose around seven to six to 16 to 18 area. I hit you right at 17. There you go. I was with I actually I was probably yep, 17. I just grad, it was the day I graduated high school. Um, we skipped school that last day and, you know, we, we, we would pop from place to place and, you know, maybe one or two were like indoors, maybe one or two were like people whose parents were okay with us drinking. I don't remember too many of those, but we, I met up with my buddy, um, oh, and this girl who I was really interested in impressing, you know? And so we're drinking and um dan wolf used to buy me booze you know i always had between dan and john i had older brothers who could buy yeah. alcohol, you know and that helped me a lot danny dan gave me his id which was easier yeah that's way easier yeah because at that age you guys all looked really simple yeah you, Absolutely. you still do yeah. But even more so back then. Absolutely. So, and we there was this place across the board. I lived in, I was in Massachusetts. There was this cr place across the border in Vermont where you only had to be 18 to buy. And there was this oh. old dude who he didn't, I don't think he didn't care. I just think he just was like, yeah, everybody, you all look the same age. So here's your booze. You know what I mean? Sure. So, you used to have somebody who drove up to parties with booze. That was the craziest thing I've ever the heard. The craziest thing in the world. Um, a delivery service to high school parties. How that person never ended up in jail. I have no idea, but what a crazy business model. Plot um, twist, it was fucking Elon Musk and he started Uber Eats. That is amazing. <laughs> so I was in, we were out down by um, me and my buddy Matt. We were drinking... Um, and uh, I didn't really care back then. I would mix up my drinks, you know, beer. I would drink peach snobs. I would, whatever. I was 17. I would really right. drink whatever, whatever you put in front of me. Right. And so what I had never done is dr I had smoked weed and I had drank, but I had never drank and smoked weed. The dangerous road. So I'm drunk. Like this meeting will end. Hold on one second. Yeah, it says we only got 10 minutes left. I'm about to. Holy shit. I have to create an account. Hold on. I'm doing this as we podcast. So Great. I I'm drunk and my buddy's like, do you want to, you know, smoke some weed? And I love weed. So I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll smoke some weed. And so I had never smoked weed and 
and I felt the world spin. Like, oh yeah, dude. And then me and this dude, okay, <laughs> we ended up passing out on the ground together. I can't, I can't believe that my, like, I have an account. What is I know. That? What's that? I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. Like, it made me install something. Like, when I clicked your link, it was like, install this, don't close this. And it installed it. And then I had to reopen the Zoom in order to get in. Maybe, um, it- well, okay. So, anyways, he and I pass out, dude. We pass out on the ground, face in, arms around each other. They just left us there. That's, or they put you like that. No, we, we passed out too, but you know, we were like stepbrothers. That's- hilarious but we dude i think my as an adult the highest i've ever been um okay as an adult i don't think i have one i mean like nah all my shit was like when i was 17 or 18 it's funny I took a I mean, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm super high all the time when like I'm not at work and I'm here at home. Right. But like, not like that fucking high. Yeah. I haven't thrown up in a long time. All right. There you go. The only time I throw up now is actually when I drink and smoke. Um, okay, Lucas, thank you very much. Next question from Casey. Ooh, she is just actually responding to us from some advice we gave her. So we don't need that one, but thank no, you, Casey. You're welcome, you're welcome Casey. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm glad that it kind of worked out. Um, okay. Brandon asks it, so me, know. what's your favorite part about stand up? Is it interacting with people and improv or do you enjoy going through somewhat of a script? Ooh, what? I think like it's a mixture person. of both. What's that? <clears throat> I said, I feel like it's a mixture of both. You know, dude, it's, Okay. I like Brandon. I like organic flow. I like the people who come to my shows to feel like they're seeing a show that nobody else is going to see because things happen. And when things come up, I address them because we're all humans in the same room. You know what I mean? Do I want people screaming out at me and heckling me? No, I like my material, man. But there are times the show when it happens. Now, yeah. do I go into the crowd and ask questions? I do. Because I want it to feel like a conversation. So I don't like drunk screaming at me. I don't like incoherent rambling. Oh, belligerent. Yeah, man. Y- yo, there was a woman in the front row that was going to be a problem at that club in Madison. They walked right the fuck up to her. They're like, nope. She wasn't front row. She was a little further back. Uh, what, which show? The um, Saturday Late. Saturday Late? Yeah. What the fuck does this mean? How many I licenses do I need? <laughs> what? Um, well, based on that timer, we have five and a half minutes left. Why do I need a license? What kind of license? Like a driver's license? I just want to upgrade Zoom meetings pro. What's happening? (laughs) I mean, honestly, dude, I have no idea what's happening right now. And it's happening while we're doing the podcast. Yeah. All right. Let me. Should we just rock? Should we just rock it out for like five more minutes? Yeah. No, it's not long. The problem we, is we haven't been recording for forty minutes. We we didn't hit record because you and I fucked about on the Zoom. You know what so I'm saying? How long has been recording? We haven't been recording for that long. That's the problem. Well. Okay. Hold shit. on a second. Here, here we are. Two, five. Two. Yeah, man. That's right. I'm signed up. All right. Well, we got to figure something out here. 
can, can you, if we take this one at where it ends and then do another one, can you just put out two together? And just say it was a continuous, it was a continuation? That's what we're gonna do. I don't have time to do this shit right now. That's what I'm saying. Like, why don't we just make it a continuation? Sorry to everybody. Sorry you guys had to listen to that. All right. Yeah. So everybody, uh, we will see you in. Uh... No, we're not gonna stop. We'll just keep going. Oh. Okay. Never mind. We'll see you still right now. Well, but but oh, the audio. Yeah, we'll just click them together. Yeah. Well, it'll also be two separate files. Yeah, but I'll 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 I'll, I'll make them one file. Oh yeah, exactly. Not me, somebody who knows what the fuck they're doing. Yeah, 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 not you. Now, okay. What do you... I'm curious, and Brandon, thank you for asking. I, I really do like to do both. I like, I like a mixture of it. But I don't like people, like I said. No, we do like, not. Yeah, yeah. I don't like the screaming out. I don't like the interruptions. I mean, I'm going to make it flowy anyways, naturally, just by how I do it. I don't, so I don't right. need the interruptions, but if you guys, if it's fun, I don't mind. What's your favorite part of the show, Jakey? Other than when I go on stage? Yeah. Uh, no, you can say when you go on stage. Oh, probably when I go on stage. Did you think you were going to like it this much? I wouldn't say I figured I'd have to like it this much, but I didn't No, I didn't think I'd like it as much as I did. Definitely. Yeah, you're doing a really good job, man. And those videos you make are really funny. I appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. Brandon, thanks for the question. Yeah, Brandon. All right. Oh, this is... What else? This, this dude's name is Diesel. Diesel? Yeah. Hey, guys, I wanted Diesel. to ask for your best father-son vacation story. I'm a huge fan of Josh and the pod. Keep up with the amazing work. You guys make my day. Well, listen. <sighs> Straight up. We're in Mexico. How old are you? How old are you? 16. This dude says to me, hey. I was thinking the same story, by the way. Yeah, then you tell it. Tell it. No, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You want me to tell it? Yeah, yeah, you tell it. Okay, so, you know, we're going to Cabo for Christmas. We fly out Christmas morning. Set it up. Who is it? Who's, who's there? It's, it's me, me, you, and mom. That's yep. it, right? Uh, and we flew out early Christmas morning. How old are you? Um, I, like I said, I was 16. Um, and we get through customs. We do the whole thing. We get to the resort. And it's the first night there. And I decide. Hold on. Okay. At customs, when you walk through, explain what the red light, green light is. Oh. So the red light, green light is... Um, it's, it's pretty much a luck of the draw. So a red light, green light is when you go through customs in Mexico. If you walk through this, uh, I would say, just going to say metal detector or machine, whatever it is. Uh, if you walk through it and it's green, you're good to go. Then you walk through. If you walk through and it blinks red, they search through all your shit. So, you know, I got the green. Did I tell you? It? I didn't tell you at the customs. I told you when we were at the. That's right. So, guys, we're walking <clears throat> through customs not knowing that this dude, if he pops red, all of us are going to jail. All of us. Yep. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Pop green. Just so everybody knows. Got him. Yes. Um, knew it was going to happen. Knew it. Not, not a care in the world. <clears throat> obviously um oh, by the way in hindsight just putting it out there really don't move on my part i would never ever in a million years do this ever again never okay so dumb. super dumb super dumb very well aware super dumb um we get to the hotel it's the first night and um i don't know it's, we're just both kind of struggling to go to sleep and uh and I'm like, can't go to bed. And he goes, no. And I'm like, yeah, I think I'm going to pull this mattress out onto the balcony. And he was like, what? And I was like, I'm going to take this second bed. Our balcony is big enough. I'm going to take this bed and I'm going to put it on the balcony. Yeah, that was amazing. And sleep on the balcony and wake up to the ocean every morning. And he was like, 
okay, sure. That sounds like a great idea. <clears throat> and I was like, yeah, I think it'll be fun. Um, and I was like, you know what would make this trip better? And I think at this point in time, we had already discussed uh, yep. that, that I had partaken. And you were like, yeah, definitely. And I was like, and I kind of just raised an eyebrow. I couldn't and, believe uh, you brought it. And his, his demeanor changed very fast. And I was like, ooh, I think I did something without thinking. <sighs> you know, uh, I mean, listen, at the end of the day, I was happy. But initially, <laughs> but you know what was crazy? Wasn't it crazy down there on the beach? You know, the people who sell the goods on the beach in Mexico. It's yeah. so funny. That's like, it was somebody would walk by and be like, sombreros, sombreros, cocaine, marijuana. What? Like they would whisper the. Yeah. It's like bracelets, <clears throat> necklace. You want some bracelets, necklace, heroin. What? Like it was banana, surfboard, baby board, surfboard, hairless cat. What? Like, what are we doing? It was, it was strange. Like, yeah, it was Maybe. very subtle. It was so, it, when we went to Puerto Vallarta this time, when you, uh, it, it was the same thing. It's such a cool, it's so funny that, like, because they're coming down selling, like, whatever. And they and, whisper, and, they'll like, show you, they'll just be like, you want some Coke? No, I'm good, dude. I'm good. No, Definitely don't want Coke from a stranger on a beach in Mexico. I don't want Coke, anyways. But if I yeah. was a Coke dude, stranger, beach, Mexico, that's not my move. Yeah, but I think also for some people, that's that's their wheelhouse. Is they just love coke, they'll get it anyway. That's a bad move. Very bad move. Yeah, that's a bad move. Um, um, okay. But, you know, successfully smuggled drugs into another country. If you got a job and you need somebody to do it, I'm not saying it's me, but I'm not saying it's not me. Um, <laughs> like fucking Jason Bourne. <laughs> that's right. Um, uh, all right. And, you know, went to bed I, every way, night. Went to bed every night. Really, yeah, it was great. I mean, went to bed every night with it and uh, on the uh, on the balcony and just chilling nice. and looking at the stars. It's great. It was a lifesaver. Yeah, it was awesome. Now, really, really good. Uh, uh, and by the way, thank you for I My answer would be the same thing. That would be the best one. Yeah, that was that was definitely the same story. All right. Morgan Fletcher says, hey, guys, my 12-year-old daughter is... Dad. <laughs> Not going to lie. I made a bet with myself in my head. I was like, yo, over, under, uh, over, under three names. And then he says a last name. And I was like, over. <sighs> I did it. This is the third email. I did it on the third one. Oh, you think I'll do more than three last names? No, no, no. I was like over, under on how many you said until you said a last name. Oh, so I was, I was, I was right was, on three, uh, I think. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Morgan says, Hey guys. My 12 year old daughter is constantly telling me my wife that one of us is better than the other to hurt the other's feelings. She also thinks she has to have the last word all the time. Is there anything that worked you, for you that you think would help us? Well, I'm not sure what you mean because I never had a kid who did that, but I, Hold on, let me answer first. Uh, by just by reading it, Morgan, and I could be wrong, but just by reading it, you've already empowered your daughter too much. You've empowered your daughter too much. I, I think parents who, and this is my opinion. As soon as you be like, as soon as you're like, hey, listen, when you talk to me like that, it hurts my feelings. The power has already switched in your house. There's no. It's not my feelings and yo, you don't talk. You are the child. We are the adult. You don't talk to us like that. What is it that you like? Because every time you talk to me like that, whatever you like is gone. You like your phone, don't you? Yeah. You are just not going to have it. Or you think you need to get the last word. Yeah. You better do it while you don't have your phone or and in your room you don't have your friends shut. or I take yeah. everything out of your room. Like we did to Jacob and we grounded him for a whole summer, everything out of that fucking room. Yeah. So, they took my TV, they took my Xbox, they took my phone. They took, it just sounds to me it. like, you, and this is my opinion. And by the way, this isn't, I'm not, I'm not a dude who's like, you shouldn't have conversations with your kids yet. Yeah, talk it up, man. But you can't give up your power 
as the authority figure in the house. <clears throat> and that's what you're doing. That's my opinion. Jacob? Um, I think it's just personally, and again, opinion, not, I'm not a parent at all either. I'm just thinking from a kid's perspective. She's try, she's switching off and telling like on um, one day, your wife is her favorite. One day you're her favorite. She's, she's just doing it for attention. I think she's just crying out for something. I'm not really sure what it is, but like, also she may be, she may use that later in life to like, act, like if she says she likes you more, she'll ask you for something that she knows her mom will say no to or vice versa. Do you know what I'm saying? So I don't know. I feel like that's a seed. You, that know, who, wants... you know who to go to stuff for. Oh yeah. hundred percent. I wouldn't go to you first. I would just go to mom. Yeah. A smart move on your part. But, but I didn't have to like, there was like, and what I'm saying is it just sounds like she's trying to manipulate you guys yeah. to when, to get what she wants. Yeah. yeah so yeah. once that seed is planted, if you get to when she's 16, it's just going to be a shitstorm. Do what he did. Take everything. Just guys, nip it, in, nip it in the butt now. Cut the roots. You know what I'm saying? You, that's right. You, okay, like, too many parents who are sharing the power in the house. Yeah, you can still treat your kid like yeah. like a human being, but guess what? You're the adult and they're the child until Big they're time. eighteen and or until they're of age and out of the house. Guess what? Your house, your rules. It, it just sounds to me like that that child is right now. Look, if the power you're telling is me that they're going to each right, she's the she's puppet mastering you guys. You got to cut those yeah. fucking strings. Yeah, you can't do it. Take back your power. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You guys are the grown people. She's That's a 12 year old. Um, all right, Morgan. It's like the same thing. It's like, how do you get your kids off the games? Take it out of their room. You're oh, the yeah, fucking I threw away your brother's, I threw away your brother's game boy. Yeah. I'm so um, happy that never happened to me. Ooh, Silver Fox asks, Hey, man, I'm a new father to big, healthy, six-month-old boy. I love him Congrats. and my wife to death and want nothing to, more than to be the best me I can be for them. That's fucking awesome, dude. Love Sometimes it. I admit it's difficult for sure to keep a smile on and my energy up when things are yet difficult. Absolutely. I'm the only income and we live our lives very tightly financially. I completely understand what that is like. All the stress makes the whole thing that much harder. And I was wondering, how did you, Josh, get to the mental space to handle raising a child while still following your dreams? And Jacob, what did your dad do for you as a kid growing up that you admired the most and hated the most? Thanks, fellas from Fort Worth, Texas. Love the pod. I'll be in Fort Worth in October, by the way. Um, I'll go first, and that yeah. way you can think about it. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Listen. The raising the kid especially let me just take it back to when we had no money and there was three kids and we were living in one room um he, i decided something very early on which was i first of all i wasn't going i was going to try really hard and some days obviously impossible i was going to try really hard not to think of this raising the kids part as a chore but i really tried to make it as fun for everybody as i can yo if i thought about it on a day-to-day -day basis what i was doing it would have dragged me under but i didn't think about it like that i thought about it station to station and my dream was what kept me going my dream is what I what plugged me in every day, you know. I was like, motivation. Yeah, I'm gonna raise these kids. I have a ton of fun doing it, and then at the end of the day, I look forward to going out and doing the thing that I love. I, you know, I think something that happens to a lot of grownups when they have kids is that they forget that they are living their life too, mm -hmm. and so they forget to have fun, they forget to have dreams, and they forget to have all that shit. And man, super important. So lots of stress, dude. But also what an amazing opportunity it is. You get to love on and shape that little tiny person. So yeah. 
have fun doing it, man. You'll look back at that age and be like, oh, I wish I get to do that again without actually having a kid. Yeah. <laughs> like when you have kids eventually someday, I can't wait to help fuck about with them, but then put them back and leave. Yeah. That's going to be the best part. Sure. Um, okay. What did your dad do for you as a kid growing up that you admired the most and hated the most? Um, I'm going to start with hated the most uh, and then end it with admired the most. Um, I'm going to say hated the most is because when I was always feeling like unmotivated or didn't want to do something like whether it was go practice or like other sport I was playing or read or do anything that wasn't like hang out with friends or like play video games with my friends or go do shit. Um, he would always tell me, he would, he would say, uh, I know what you're going to say. <laughs> he would say, if there was a million dollars for you at the end of it, would you go do it? And I'd be like, well, fucking of course, dude, but there's no fucking million dollars at the end of it. I don't, what's the point? That wasn't anyway, exactly how I used that. I would do this. No, right? you would say exactly those words. Oh, no, I would say that, but not in those, not practice. No, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like for like things that I wanted, like if I wanted money, it was like, go get a job, right? Or like certain things. But like, it was always like, Gee, if you want it, you could have it. it. Yeah, I would be like, it was things that like, yes. So Things that you opted not to do, but talked about wanting done. I was like, yeah, go do them. You're like, no, nah. I would say if there yeah. was a million dollars, you were like, yeah, I can go for a million dollars. Uh, Stop giving me that example. I hate that. It's stupid. I'm going to do it to you next example. week. What a stupid example. I don't think we're using it in the right context. Let me tell you something. We, on, you. On, I, I forget how I used it. I'm not going to lie to you. That's I'm, I'm exactly gonna, how you listen, used it. Listen, on this podcast, on an episode, in the future, if I get the opportunity to use it, I'm using it. I'm going to light you on fire. Oh, God damn it. Okay. Um, and I most. would say the things I admire the most is kind of what you said is like, he made everything in life fun. And my, my mom as well. Like yeah. they both did. Like they yes. both made life as fun as possible. Like and your mom was, was, there was, your mom was so good at projects like school projects and all that stuff. Yeah. They, they, they made the time pass and like they made us not have to recognize things that I know they did have to recognize as a child. Like my mom was uh, a massive figure in her life, like helping to raise her two younger siblings. And I know you were the baby, but you still were in a very like conscious family. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you both were always conscious about those things, but you made sure that there was never a burden or anything on your kids because you were not raised with a burden, but like, you know, raised with a weight on your shoulders and you didn't want your kids to have the same thing, which I thought was very admirable and very awesome because it helped us not have to worry until we, you know, had to work. Yeah. I hope you don't have to worry right now. Even. Uh, I feel good right now. I feel good, good. right now. Silver Fox, thank you. Last question. Ready? Last question. Um, hold on. Hold on. Hold Wait. on. Wait. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. Wait a second. I think Are that might be the last question. Oh, really? Hold on. Nice. I need to. This dude is going to get the tattoo. Which dude? Hold on. Well, did did he send an, uh, a picture? I'm going to send it to you. Last question. Stoner question. Ooh. We, we, I'm not sure if we will answer all of them, but this is from Austin. Uh, all of them? There's numerous? Hey, man. Name's Austin. First, would like to say, Josh, I love your stand-up. Jacob, I love your reaction videos. And I've been listening to the Elves podcast for a minute now. And I got to say, I love the dynamic between you two and the stories. Y'all's podcast is helping me stay sane while I'm going through my divorce. Sorry to hear that, man. I really appreciate oh, what y'all do. Please never stop. I used to smoke quite a bit, quite often before having kids and just have a few stoner questions for both of you to answer. What's the craziest name you've nicknamed a bong? And what's the craziest name for one you've heard? I've never nicknamed a bong, so I can't answer that. 
I have. Um, trying to remember the things we named our bongs. I mean, Jackson had one named Bronco, but that was only because it was the old school colors of the Denver Broncos. And his parents are from Denver. Yeah. Um, I had one that was called uh, Did- Hurricane. Oh, I had one that was called Iceberg. My nice. first one was called Iceberg. I had one that was called Hurricane. What's one? Um, what's the craziest one you smoked at? Uh, Riley and I made a six foot bamboo bong out of a piece of bamboo from his backyard. What'd you call it? Fucking the pole vault? I don't know. I, that's a <sighs> dude nailed it. I, I smoked out of one once. This dude called it the prolapse because that's it unfortunate. Such, it's such a huge bong. Rumor had it, folklore word on the street was that somebody coughed so hard that they coughed out their butthole they prolapsed that's kind of nuts listen i i didn't take a hit off that bong because i was like just on the off chance that that's real i'm gonna pass on that yeah uh Although- there's also one there's also one that i had where like well, actually so it was a thing that again riley and i had like kind of I wouldn't say combined our two together but so do you know there's something there's an attachment you can put at the end of a bong called uh, it's called an ash catcher and it helps keep your like the ash the base catcher your, yeah <laughs> it makes it keep it helps keep the base of your bong clean and your down something like that um and it could also have like stuff called uh percolators in it so it helps with the filtration of the water okay it's a lot of bubbles right um and so riley and i at the time each had one on our ball and i was like wait what if we did this and i took his out of his and i put mine in and then his on top of mine and then like the bowl in so it was like a double so we called that because it was like a combination of the two we called the 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 oh, fuck, what was the thing from power rangers called morphin uh mighty, mighty morphin, morphin power rangers yeah yeah but what was the what was the the big morphin thing called um the robot what was the robot called i don't know i never watched Ultron. that show something along the lines of that it was the giant morphin i just want to uh, let you know you this was a big long story about that bomb yeah, but it's got a lot of history. And people were really expecting a name. Uh, if you know what it is, you know what it is. If you know, you know. How about that? <laughs> Better answer. I fucking love that. All right. Yeah. What's your favorite movie, stoner movie? What's your favorite movie? He's asking what's your favorite stoner movie and what's your favorite movie to watch high. But you can answer either one. Uh, hmm. Favorite movie to watch high, National Treasure. Favorite stoner movie uh, is either Fast Times and or uh, Pineapple Express. Yeah, for me, I'm a, I'm a Pineapple Express guy. Yeah, me too. And uh, my favorite movie to watch high is either This Is The End, because <laughs> the scene between Danny McBride and James Franco talking about jizzing on each other makes me laugh. It's, it's, it's pretty funny. <laughs> Every fucking time every time and then any of the jurassic parks or any of the oh, okay of the when i'm high i want a dinosaur or a dragon Fair enough. you know how much i like dragons dude i do i do indeed okay and his third question is which celebrity did you have the most fun smoking with but let's just ask and this is obviously a question that i'm sure a lot of people get asked your ultimate smoke session Oh, dude, I don't even know if I can. That's a question Iman has asked me a bunch of times, and I have yet to actually like form a perfect, I don't know. Uh, with unlimited people, like it could be fucking a bunch of people. What's the limit? I'll give you three. Ah, Jesus. That was way less than I thought you were going to give you me. You want me to go first? No, yes. Snoop, Willie, Miley. All one word people. Snoop, Snoop, Willie Miley. I'm going Snoop, Wiz, Yeah. Mm. Who are you? Ba- I mean, speak out loud. Who are you deciding between? I'm trying to see if I want to do an athlete and or an artist. Like who? Speak out loud. This is people are listening. I don't know. I mean, like, 
my idol obviously is like David Ortiz. So like, I think that would probably be, I mean, that would probably be up there. Let's just do that. Yeah. So I would probably go Snoop Wiz, David Ortiz. Could you hear that? Unfortunately, it sounded a little wet. You all right? (laughs) It's an honest question. Just checking on you. You all right? It's not wet, but it is warm here in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. Yep. (laughs) Whatever floats your boat, whatever you want to go with. Whatever helps you. Hey, everybody, we're going to have to wrap it up there. ComedianJoshWolf.com for tour dates. Jacob Wolf will be out with me on June 19th, Father's Day, special Father's Day show in Nashville. Then the following week. Yeah, in San Antonio. We'll be in San Antonio with me. Okay. Um, 24th, 25th, 26th. These shows are going to be next level. The shows that he comes to have sell out super quickly. So if you want to come to those shows, super fun. get on it. Um, what you got? Let everyone know. Um, it's Jake Wolf on TikTok, Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram. I'm trying to stream a little more more on Twitch right now. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Youthful Wolf. Um, come check it out. Uh, hopefully, hopefully getting back to a stream schedule. Um, trying to do, I think, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. But we're going to find out. Um, and that's it. You all right? Yeah. All, all right. right. Strange. I think you forgot we were like filming for a second. Your no, I was trying up. to see if you were going to say anything. Well, at first, I, I first I wanted to, because I have a big mouth. I was just seeing how big it looked on next to the microphone, and then I realized that we were still filming. Pause. Huh? Huh? Anyways, at Josh Wolf Comedy. <laughs> <laughs> Greetingjoshwolf.com for tour dates and tickets. That's right. And guess what, everybody? We're having a good time doing this. If you like it, there we are. Tell a motherfucker. Tell your friends. That's right. Buddy, I love you. I'll see you maybe tomorrow. I'm off at six. Just text me. Okay, I love you. Love you guys. Love hey, you. man. Thank you for the phone call. It doesn't matter if he's not ringing up the wall. Go where we gotta go. Now who